everyone is having a good Wednesday slash hump day, which I don't know why that's a thing, but anyway. Right. Maybe camels. Um, I don't know. Camels. Camels. Shout out to Heather. Heather back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Heather. Both of our mentors. I've learned so much from her. Oh, she is she is the bomb. She is the boss. Yes. She is. She is. Anytime I need something. Heather, please help. Please let me know how to do this. <laughs> I mean, oh, I messaged her one time at midnight. I'm like, oh, she's not awake. And then she's like, oh, she is awake. She is awake. She, boss lady she, does not sleep. She knows, she knows what you what you need. She knew how to help. Oh, yeah. Because she's amazing. So, she, she is. Anyways, the Heather back. Heather Beth, she is Beth everything. Podcast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just opening, just opening up. Brought to you by Heather. <laughs> Heather's here. <laughs> uh, all right. Oh, that was so funny. That was a great introduction. Uh, anyway, so Rebecca, it's been a, it's been a few months since I saw you at conference last time. So, um, why don't you give us a quick introduction of where? Of who you are and uh, where you're at, and then what do you what do you what do you do in your area? And uh, well, after that, we'll continue. We'll do our talk with about enrichment. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. So, thank you for having me. You've been having some amazing people on, and I'm love hearing all the different range of topics. Um, I live in the Florida Keys now, so actually Key Largo, Florida, but my business is in Miami, Florida. And we have about 10 people on staff, a uh, range of trainers, canine care, uh, guest services positions. And primarily, we train pet dogs and um, just empowering people to live a good life with their dogs. So whatever that means for them. So it's different. We really personalize uh, and want to personalize for the future what, what our clients need. So that's what we're doing right now. And we absolutely love it. Um, I also, as you know, travel with my dogs everywhere and we do a lot of tricks and we do just random things. We play disc dog sports. Um, I just love dogs and dog sports in general and training and I like happy dogs. I like happy people. So, no, thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. You know, we like meeting you from conference like uh, was it Colorado or was it Florida that might have been one of the florida ones maybe mm -hmm. the red tide florida year maybe i think maybe i think that, though, i don't know i think it i think it was definitely red tide the one where we had red tide which was unfortunate and stinky yes. but uh it it was still we still had a fun time otherwise agree agree, agree. You just didn't go outside <laughs> no stay we just outside. just just stayed in the hotel the whole time and <laughs> yes. you know uh, <laughs> Oh, that was yeah, good, good, good times. I remember just stinky times, but it was still good times. Yes, yes, yes. We're talking about the International Association of Canine Professionals, everyone. If you're not a member, you should be. Uh, they do things like legislation, help us to uh, have humane, uh, ethical use of tools. Um, if you're not a member, you should really look into it. I know they'd love the shout out on here too, the IACP. Hi, hi, CP. You know, we're both members and, yep. uh, you know, that's how we connected and it's a great yep. place to just network with just really great trainers. And, you know, you get to, you get to see Heather cause Heather's always there. Yes. Yes. And, and, uh, yeah, no, it's a great, it's a great resource and you're, you're, it always feels welcoming to be at the IACP. Yes. And that's why I always, that's all, that's why I always make it a, a point to, reserve my september days for september for the conferences so same 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 this last one too was really nice because it was the first one i think after covid and it was really a like a nice homecoming for everyone to actually connect in person it was so mm -hmm. different than the virtual land <laughs> i know i don't i know it was just so weird it was supposed to be in san diego and then they and then they wasn't and it was just like <laughs> oh i gotta go all the way i gotta go i gotta go all the way across the state cool <laughs> it was good for me so i was like yes <laughs> i can just drive i don't have to i don't have to fly but you know whatever covid's right. still starting to come down which is fantastic right so i think i hope all right cool so so guys if you got if you guys are watching please feel free to leave a comment or if you got any questions just let us know um the topic today for me, for Rebecca and I to talk about is enrichment in dogs. So 
you know, uh, Rebecca, like for you, what in your definition, like what's enrichment, but like also to what's, why is it so important yeah. to provide it for your dogs? Yeah. Yeah. Um, enrichment can be so many things. So it could be, I think the most, the easiest one I think of is a Kong toy, obviously getting peanut butter. That's the one everyone thinks of that and puzzle toys. Like you stick food in it and your dog can have it. But there's mm -hmm. so many more um, like sounds, sounds. We could play sounds on YouTube um, and it's important. I'm going to go. We have a million more that we'll get into, but it's important because it gets their their minds thinking rather than just the monotony of every day being the same. It the dog and the dog's point of view, they're in the same box every day. They go out to the same backyard every day. Sure, they might go on one walk a day if they're very lucky. And so these enrichment items really give our dogs something else to keep their wheels turning, to get their minds thinking. Um, it keeps them stimulated, prevents boredom, and could even prevent unwanted behaviors from happening in your home. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, that's a perfect way to describe it. And, you know, I feel like uh, every, I get clients that usually just work with that work like a eight to five job. And then, you know, they come back, they come back home and the dog's just pent up from all this mm -hmm. from being home too long or like it's raining. And then I feel like a lot of people focus on like the physical exercise, like a little yes. way too much. And yes. probably like you, you heard from how Heather describes it too, you know, like the more you, the more ex physical exercise you end up doing, like you end up just, building more endurance with the dog and then you're just gonna have to exercise the dog a lot more to get it tired but then i just missing the mental part yes. mental exercise of this is a big factor i feel like because it's it's like you can be physically tired but your brain wants to keep going whereas like if you're right. mentally tired you're less likely to you know you're more likely to rest and actually like want to go out for a jog like yes. after that, you know, especially with you, you have like, you do this, you do a lot of uh, sports with your, with your border collie and even like your puppy who is the cutest little Pomeranian in the world, uh, you know, do tricks, obedience, yeah. all that. Like you're shaping this puppy to be like super dog when he, when he's he or she, I forgot. He, 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 when he gets older, you know, so like you're already satisfying their needs and giving yep. them a purpose so yeah yep. no i totally agree and instead of because i think it's easier too sometimes like we think of the physical things go run your dog go go fetch with your dog um and you're 100 percent right heather's right we're building marathon runners we're bring, building dogs that can just run longer but their wheels are still turning they're still inside going ah what's going on they're not settled and enrichment too like if we give one piece of enrichment, we can't give what we can, we can give the same thing every day forever, but that kind of creates boredom. So if we like mm -hmm. differed it a little bit, I would create more like, oh my gosh, it's this one day. And then this another day, it creates more um, excitement um, and, and creativity, I think in their minds, rather than it being the same thing every single day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, yeah, because it's just like, you know, people already have a hard time just trying to get the dogs out to walk and then also yeah. like they it's it's just like a thing that a lot of people don't think about because it's like for me i always think it's important to make sure the dog's fulfilled which you know we did kind of i did kind of talk about with j jack but you know it's just like fulfilled mm -hmm. in like physically exercise mentally exercise even just like for even like some dogs you know socially socially is is important as well yeah. Yeah. um but just because like I feel because every because like with most dogs every dog is like bred with like a purpose like depending on the breed depending on the genetics it's just like you know if you have a couch potato lab or great thing you know and you know minimal stuff okay cool May, they might not be as demanding of it but if you have like let's say a working line border collie or let's say you had like uh or Give me another, given what's another breed you feel like uh, people get and they don't know what they're 
Uh, like the little mini Aussies. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And pe <laughs> yeah. People get them. People get them for like the size and the like how cute they are, but then they don't realize. Oh, this dog is like yappy, or, or even like corgis. It's just like all yes. oh, they're all oh, they're yappy. All oh, they bite my leg, or they're just so controlled. Yes. And I'm like, what do you expect? This thing is supposed to herd sheep and cows. Yes. Yes, yes. They all have like different instincts. They all have little different traits. And then, of course, you said you 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 talked about the genetic component. And then you just don't know what you're getting because there's also like how you're raised. And so there's both. There's the genetics and then how you're raised. And there's also just the wild card that you just never know how the dog's going to turn out too. So yep. it's all like a bunch of different things, even if you think you're getting this border collie from these perfect lines you don't know like sometimes things happen and they're just different they're a different dog or they like different things or your scent dog doesn't really like scents he likes tugging or something mm -hmm. you just never know <laughs> yeah. you just never yeah. know it's hard it's hard to determine what to do and i mean amazon too like the only thing they have for sale is like the food puzzles really if you don't know what you're looking for if you're if you're just normal pet parent you go on there you see food puzzle okay of course i'll get my dog this and then the next thing that happens is usually it's in a million pieces and they're like what went wrong uh, <laughs> or the dog decides not to mess with the puzzles at all yes. and then it's just like the puzzles there goes... like too hard yes yes at first yes and, yes, then, yes. and then and then there goes 25 dollars. you know Correct. And the... i wasted my money <laughs> and just like oh like that's just that's yes. just unfortunate or even like a kong like people like stuff the kong so fast and then the dog's like too difficult i don't i don't want to work for it yes 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 I, I i i i totally agree i totally agree i think we did a really good job saying why it's all important um mm -hmm. and a good job of saying that like different breeds have different instincts and stuff i think it also ties into that puppies too puppies are going to be different from for enrichment needs than adult dogs um mm -hmm. so like uh, puppies are probably chewing or teething more, so their toys may need to be more like durable. Um, if we're doing fitness activities, puppies cannot go to the, they're not supposed to be doing jumps. They're not supposed to be doing tons of repetitive motion. So we like to keep puppies on like the floor or lower impact, um, doing more foundation stuff um, to make sure we're respecting the dog and, and keeping the dog as safe as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I, yeah it's just so it's just like i see i meet so many different owners different dogs it's just like you know it 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 is different every it varies for each dog and i just yes. like and it's just like you know it's like puppies and like younger dogs like if you give them some of that mental enrichment and just provide a provide an outlet then it's like okay cool you don't get digging in the yard you don't get nice. chewing your furniture or your carpet or things like that yeah. um because i feel like it's just the dogs are just prisoners in the house sometimes and it's just yes. hard for them to express anything in a way so it's just like like for you and me having dogs we know our dogs pretty well and we we know we know where we know where to bring them we know what to do with them or we know we have a game plan mm -hmm. on what to provide but the average dog owner that's where it's like you know they're not sure that's why they come to us that's why like me, me making this video is going to be important for people to listen to and just yes hear two trainers talk about it and you know it, it's definitely just something where it's like everyone's just like oh i gotta take my dog for a one hour run or something like that and it's just like okay cool what happens if it's snowing or raining right right what if you can't go outside what if you yeah. what, like what if you hurt your leg literally and can't go outside what is your dog going to do how are you going to get out that energy and there's a hundred percent ways to do it inside um at first it's going to be you know a difference for the dog the dog's going to be like what happened to my walk today but then over time things will level out and stuff and I'm not saying replace it completely, but it's a good component to add in. It's kind of like a puzzle piece you add in. It can mm -hmm. help to be that missing link that you're doing the other things. You're doing some training. You're going for a walk, maybe some playtime. And if you still need something, this could be the link you're you're needing to help have that full picture of of relax, um, of of a healthy, happy, happy dog. 
Um, I do think I, I mentioned puppies. I do think it's also important that when I we do talk about um, the individual enrichment items is to do it solo at first. Like if you don't have very good control over two dogs, do it solo. Because especially when you're doing food or resources that could spark issues between two dogs, I would personally advise doing it solo so you don't have to worry about dogs getting issues about the same food or the same toys. Um, because a lot of the enrichment stuff, it it can be very like one on one and we're going to want to be a part of the process sometimes versus like, sure, you can let your dog go have a Kong and eat it in the corner. But um, like like the puzzle toys, like we were just talking about, for instance, it's it being too hard, like if it's too hard, let's make it easier. That's we can show the dog that they can get the toys or the food out of it to help them. And through that, they'll learn how to overcome that. And, and eventually they'll be really good puzzle goers, but they just sometimes need the help. They had no idea they could even make that thing move. Um, so for like puzzle toys and stuff, helping them uh, doing it separate, but then also helping them um, really, really helps too. Yeah. And I think too, you know, it's like everyone keeps giving the same puzzles and then it's just like, it just, the dogs are just like finishing like one minute and then the dog's yes. like what's what's next and yes. then you're like and you're like i don't know what to i don't know what's next yes i don't know what's next what's next so let, let's say okay what is next what i would probably do is take that puzzle toy and see if you can move it in a cardboard box that's easy everyone's getting amazon boxes let's change the location of the puzzle toy let's mm -hmm. maybe make it underneath um, the kitchen table or something weird, maybe two pillows on the side of it. So just by changing the location, it may make your dog like, wow, this is weird today or act differently with it. Mm -hmm. We could also try putting possibly different size food in it or different um, types of food, like maybe more sticky. So they have to do it more. Um, any ideas for that, Kevin, other than just get other toys too? That's a good one. Yeah, I mean, like the big. Maybe freeze, I mean, freeze, uh, like a little bit of water and peanut mm -hmm. butter in it, or like uh, freeze it, some water and like a blueberry, so they have to lick it for a while because it will happen sometimes where they're just mastering them. But you could also put it on a shelf, go to another enrichment item, and come back to it too. But it just means that your dog's that smart, so maybe they need. There are upgrades in the, in the levels. Maybe we need to start a sharing program of dog toys. Yeah. Of, right <laughs> of puzzle well, toys we, we better we, we better get sponsored or paid for like <laughs> mentioning all these products and then just yes. like just get reimbursed somehow let's do it let's do it let's do it so puzzle toys are good um of course i love stuff kongs I, we use them at work all the time because they're very easy and very durable um they just get very repetitive in my opinion so mm -hmm. i don't use like too much of them um in like our enrichment program at work. Um, we do scatter feed, which if you're not familiar with that, it could be dribbling kibble or food um, like in the grass somewhere and letting your dog get it out of there. It could be just putting it on the floor in the ground and spread out and just letting your dog get it there. Um, when scatter feeding at first, we want to make it really easy because our dog's going to be, some dogs will be like, why did you just throw my food over there? Um, but some dogs will be ravenous and go get it. So whichever one you got, you can start with either one. Um, it also helps sometimes if dogs do weird things to like get them to focus on something instead of something else. So there's your training tip and all of this. Um, but scatter feeding is a great activity that I love doing, especially with our big thinkers that are overly excited, like our Weimar Reiners, uh, that, that just, that energy, it's there. I love scatter feeding their food in the grass and letting them sniff and find all of that food rather than just eating it out of a bowl. Um, it makes them work a lot. They have to think and they have to sniff and find each individual piece and they love it. They love the work of it. You can clearly see they're very happy dogs doing it. Um, so mm -hmm. I love, love, love yeah. scatter feeding. Yeah, scatter feeding is my favorite. I just tell people, and people laugh when I suggest this to them because it's like, I kind of just tell them, you know, like dogs kind of, some dogs like working for their food. Also, when you feed a dog in the bowl, it's kind of mindless, you know, it's just like yeah. the dog's just, the dog is in the same spot and it's like just yeah. doesn't, don't, sometimes doesn't 
do good if unless your dog's a senior and your dog's just like right. Right. really laid back then sure but the, but it's like you know it's like for like i know trainers who you know do who work on existential feeding which is basically feeding from the pouch and like they don't eat it from a bowl yep. and it's just like but for normal people like for normal pet people i just say hey look in your in the morning you can do five minutes or three minutes of obedience with your kibble yep. and then yep. you can throw it you can chuck your kibble <laughs> right into the yard and then you just sip your coffee and just watch your yes. dog for 15 minutes look for his food and yes. at least you give it some enrichment that way in the morning and then do something later on if yes. your dog's like a busy body even like uh nose work like i just like a, like a quick and like a, a dumb version of mm -hmm. nose work it's just like you know getting the amazon boxes putting their kibble in those boxes spread it yep. around the house just like having the kids go find the food and then the dog goes in the bathroom in the backyard and then you go say find it and then the dog goes find goes find the box with the food yep. and also i i i have clients who are clean 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 freaks about it so yeah. Yeah. if Same. like they like just ha just having food just having food in the boxes just minimizes messes and things like that too and yes. even a garage if your dog doesn't like the rain it's like okay go find Go find kibble in the garage if you if there's no questionable things in the garage for your dog to swallow because there's a lot of there's always like junk and you know right. people like to work on their cars mm -hmm. in there so um even right. like if you don't have grass too snuffle mats i was gonna say snuffle yes. mats are great yeah snuffle mats are fantastic and you can even make them yourself you can go to the fabric store literally and tie the things together it's really not that hard and i'm not that great at doing anything like that um, so there is like an inexpensive version of snuffle mats. I loved your, uh, the food in the boxes. And so we do that. We do that at work a lot, um, because mostly they're pet dogs and not all of them come all the time because they're mostly training retreats. Some of them are boarding. Um, we do, we do the basic box in and for some dogs, it's really weird to even like stick their head in a box. So like you were just uh, putting treats so they slowly work their head in. Um, but these are really good things. You wouldn't think that a dog sticking its head in the box um, would be a good enrichment item, but it really is. It makes them think twice, like, what the heck is this? I'm getting my food out of a box today. Um, mm -hmm. And we all get Amazon boxes right to the house. And then the food search around the house, um, my business partner, I started laughing because my business partner, when I first we first started working together, she did... Um, uh, a ton of food searches with her boy rebel like it was she did it every single day almost for every meal and i loved it so much i would just see the video of her literally putting kibble all around her house and she would say go get it and he he still does it um and because she did it so much he like naturally just runs around and hits things with his nose like looking oh for God. kibble <laughs> i love it i love it all that that's that's pretty good yeah i love scatter feeding especially like i have five dogs and like sometimes if they're just bugging me to feed them a little earlier i'm just like no it's like yeah. okay you get a little snack go yeah. go find it in the backyard and yeah. just work for a little keep you a little if, satiated until dinner if they time eat it out of their bowl it's gone in 30 seconds and there's no no thought that goes into that it's just completely scarfed down at least they've sniff they've done more dog things dog specific behaviors to get their food and i i clearly see in most dogs that they're a little bit more chill when they do these things um mm -hmm. you, sometimes you can't see it immediately but over time of doing these things it really has a good impact on our dog's lives um of course we have like we've been kind of talking like food enrichment so far we also have like obviously cognitive enrichment which is what we do all the time which is our our obedience our sits for treats our agility um i guess puzzle toys is too nose work is but really more like command type things i guess i'm getting to that all is enrichment um even mm -hmm. the silly dog tricks is a hundred percent enrichment um I love dog tricks. If people haven't noticed, I have really begun starting to do more and more and more. Um, and I just, I think they're so fun and it's very neat to see these weird things that dogs wouldn't normally do them do it or do it out of joy. So it's very fun for me, but I think, um, even just your basic sitter down, uh, 
it's sometimes hard to get for pet parents though. You know, it really is. I, to I totally, they're not doing it every day. So I totally get why mm -hmm. it's hard. Um, and that's why we're here. That's why us dog trainers exist. Yep. I mean, I mean, even like a, on like a side note, like if the owners are even just busy with life, if they have kids, if they work the eight to five job, they, yeah. they have like a lot of responsibilities. It's also yes. important too that, you know, there, there are professionals out there that can provide yes. enrichment, whether it's like a dog walk or like a pack walk or something, or yes. even just like, you know, a trainer to go and do day training, take your dog for a few hours and then come back. Yes. So then your dog went out to actually practice something productive versus just stay at home or yes. go with like, go with like your parent, go stay at your parents' house, which is free, but don't really yes. practice anything productive, you know? So it's, um, yeah, especially just using just using the brain, just getting the brain working is so nice because it's like you're you see the brain, you see like puppies, puppy brains are just such big sponges, just absorbing everything, yes. processing everything. Adult dogs, you know, it's just like you see their brains fuming sometimes, just like trying to figure it out. And I mean, I always consider, I always compare like. Um, this is what I kind of think about when for something like that. It's like it's like a comparison with like high school, right? Like you could like I do track and field and I did like short distance and I run and I do large bursts of energy. But by the time I finish, my my brain still wants to keep going, but my body's physically yeah. tired temporarily. But then I'll have like a friend in high school that we were just in the math class for an hour is already asleep. And then the teacher has to slap a textbook on his desk, you know? And so it's yeah. just like how the brain processes things yes. and it and how it like burns energy and burns calories to just observe, observe, the, the absorb like information and things like that yes. is crucial. And it's like, I kind of tell people like, with their dogs, you know, try to consider it by like having an itinerary for like a homeschool program or just like have it where you have certain times where you practice maybe some obedience or tricks. And then yes. you do, you have maybe an option between like a chew, like a bully stick, a marrow bone or like a Kong or, yeah. or even like an, or even in the hot summer, I've told people like, get like a, get like big ice molds, put like some broth, Put their kibble in there put like a chicken feed or like a carrot in there okay. and then give that give that give that to them in the in the backyard where it won't where if it melts it won't be messy in your house but they can just chew on that yes. for a bit yes yes no i love that we need to do that here in miami because it gets so hot in the summer so hot in the summer yeah. um i love all the frozen things we um we at work, so once a month we do like a doggy daycare party, which is like a themed event. There is usually a sweet treat and like a photo booth type area. So it's um, like a very cute uh, type thing. Um, but our sweet treats, if you go on like Pinterest or even Google and you type in uh, dog treats or dog Valentine's Day treats, there was instantly strawberries, whipped cream, a thing that we made up to look so cute for dogs. And that's different. They liked licking it. Um, you'd be surprised, like for Thanksgiving, we I give all the dogs <laughs> turkey, green beans, a little bit of mashed potatoes, and like sweet, no, sweet potatoes, um, and then a little whipped cream. And it's very interesting to see what dog likes what. You wouldn't, you wouldn't think that they all have their preferences, but they do like a hundred percent. Like they all choose different things. And then the ones that you think would have ate the whole thing, they're like, no, I'm very picky and, and only like the yams. And then mm -hmm. the other ones are like, oh, I eat everything. So it's just, it's fun to get their minds thinking something else and it helps them to live happier, healthier lives. It really mm -hmm. helps them to fit into our lives much better than than if they didn't do these activities for sure for sure um yeah i mean i mean i just a little side note too is just like you know if without human influence i feel like the dogs would just be you know 
finding their own things to do in the sense like they they figure out what they figure out what's enjoyable what's not and then you know it's from chasing a bird or cat to digging a hole to get a gopher or just you know or playing with other dogs like just if we left dogs by themselves we wouldn't have to worry about it but because you know we bring them in our culture we bring them into our society and then everything's just all dogs must be indoors on right, a we leash. lock them in like cages like not yep. houses i mean the house being the cage and the backyard yep. being the cage is what i mean because for dogs they like roam they would go they would move they would go pee on all the trees and take in all the sights and all the sounds of their areas um i personally have a dog that we found him because he was running but given a chance and loud noises i know he's still a runner so of course he has the gps thing but it's just very interesting to see dogs that naturally have that go seek run um versus like my border collie who won't leave my side you know um Mm -hmm. so it's 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 nice to have different enrichment options for both types of dogs because freddie's very let's go long line and pee on things and he loves it whereas kismet's more like no mom what would you like to do let's do that and i'm like okay great boy let's do it <laughs> let's do it <laughs> Sounds yeah good. there's yeah i mean there's they're just dogs that are just happy just exploring like even like a 30 minute sniff walk in a big field and just letting them take yes. in all that info on the grass I kind of just tell, I kind of just call it Facebook, going on Facebook for the dogs where yes. um, they're, they're browsing through their social media, sniffing the grass and things like yes. that. Like this is their social media exploring kind of thing on their phones, just like, here you go. And it's just the way they just process things in the brain and how happy they are like, after that. It's just, yes. it's just so interesting. Yes. And uh, honestly, when I first started as a dog trainer, I was like, no, don't sniff this. Don't sniff that. Don't do this. Don't do that. But now I'm like, sniff all you want. Sniff everything. Pee on whatever you want. And then when I need you to be really strict, I can bring you in and we can be strict. But until then, I really am very clear now. Like, you can go. I we, we just keep you in the house all day let's let you this is your chance your walk to go pee on things but if, of course if i'm passing people we can be strict and stuff but um i really uh try to let dogs be dogs more the more i learn i really try to let them do things that are natural and only rain it is as much as i need to um to let them be happiest yeah and i think uh one thing i thought of just letting dogs be dogs like my dogs love our walks love hikes on the leash but the best thing my dogs love is just to be galloping at full speed running in the distance and just go and just run like not running in like terms of a jog for like like a run around the neighborhood just just run and we go to like this place and we go to this big off-leash hiking area right by the san francisco golden gate bridge called fort funston and it's an hour away but it's always worth the drive we just take them there they got their e-collars and things like that it's just like for me they just run and they just they just go off the distance they come back but then i'll send them back to run again and it's like even if you have a dog that you're not that isn't reliable off leash it's okay you can have like a long lead and like a not a retractable leash, the very different, um, but like just like a very nice material, long leash, whether it's like 30 yeah. or or if you're crazy like me, I have a 60 foot that yeah. I can really yeah. let dogs roam. But yeah. um, I'm, a, I'm a flexi lover. So I end up teaching my clients because we do a lot. Of, our clients are mostly in like downtown Miami. So very little space, lots of dogs and stuff. Um, and the dog parks are always very busy with who knows what you're going to get on one day. So usually I end up teaching them, here's a flexi, how to use it to be able to allow the dog to run because there's no space. So like we have to make the most of the situation to let them have those outlets because it's so natural, like, and it's beautiful to see them naturally just take off and do what they want to do. And they're so happy. They're so happy. I think that's a Mm -hmm. good segue into, um, I know we were like physical, you can create marathon runners, which you can, like you can do too much of that, but there is a lot of good, like physical type enrichment, like, um, 
obviously letting your dogs run. Yes, of course. But things like flirt poles. You can do that it kind of in a small setting, like in a in a, a smaller backyard. You can absolutely use a flirt pole, uh, which if you're not familiar, it's a stick uh, with a string on it. And at the end of it, there's some sort of tug toy that the dog can bite. Sometimes it squeaks. Um, there's different ones that look like squirrels and stuff. Uh, but essentially, you can get the dog to run around you. Um, I love them. I love them uh, to add in. Uh, sometimes parents, pet parents just need something quick to get out the energy in a small space. So I love for flirt poles. Um, but it, it can also be a little repetitive too and get a little bit boring in my opinion. But I like to add it in. And you can make a cheap flirt pole out of like a stick and like string on it. Like it doesn't take, you don't have to buy the thing on Amazon. You can make this very cheaply mm -hmm. at home. Um, you you probably have more experience than me with spring poles, Kevin, but I know they exist and I know they're really cool. Oh, they're oh they're really cool. Like I like they're like I have one from Amazon that I recommend that I usually send to people that is like you can connect it to like a tree that you can um, yes. like you don't need like the whole yoga thing. It just needs like a tr a strong tree that you can attach it like the base as a anchor and then you hung you hang the toy with a good panic snap to uh Perfect. for the for so that so that the dog doesn't go break the branch or pulls the toy right off the yep. thing yep. and for for people that don't know what a spring pole is um i having a little brain fart but rebecca if you want to describe yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's essentially it's like a rope over a tree the one he's talking about it's a rope over a tree and at the end of it there's a tug toy the dog can bite onto uh essentially it's like mm, anywhere from like one foot to like four foot off the ground it's a it's a certain height for the dogs uh, uh heights to be safe for them but essentially they can grip onto it and hang on to it and some of them when they're like they don't actually hang on it but the pros they definitely jump onto it and stay hung on to it um a uh, spring pole is what it's called but they have really cool versions for our, our pet dogs at home um who aren't as pro as the pros uh and it can really help with it it's, I, it's our pitties mostly that that love it i mean our huskies actually really liked it kismet let my border collie liked it i was very surprised about that um, but he, he loved being sent to it and you can use some of your obedience to around it, which is really cool to add in a sit or a trick, or anything you have, uh, it helps, could help them to work their brains around their fun tug toy outlet. Yeah. And I think especially too, I think it's, I think with the flirt pole and the, and the spring pole, I think it's great, like definitely for the pities, but I think like the dogs that. I think just have a little bit more prey drive than your average yes. dog, you know, and, you know, yes. there's always like this, there's all these different things a dog does. Like Jade talked about like stock, you know, mm -hmm. like, like stalking, yep. uh, eating, celebrating, playing, or just like, you know, the fight. And, you know, some dogs have certain preferences than others when it comes to those different things. And, you know, it also just like it just gets the it just really gets a good work out of the dog and the dog is allowed to just let let it out. And sometimes, too, like with us, with a spring with the spring and a flirt pole, it's like very like supportive games. It's not like you're comp it's not like you're competing with the dog. And it's like for you. And it's like for me, like especially like I don't do bite work, but I love the GRC dog sports and I love spring pole and I can work. I can work my shepherd. I can work on like getting her to let go of the toy and like out from a distance and then practice like coming back to me, sending hit to go get it. Or maybe like I can have the, I'm trying to have my hand fit the screen, but like <laughs> here's the dog. And then, in, and then there's me. And yeah. right between that is this at the spring pole and maybe work on coming back to me instead cool. of going for the pole and as soon as he comes to me then i can say get it and then yes. just, just make it one whole make it one big game even like j jack like even has That's taught right. this to like grandmas with 80 pound plus pities yeah. yeah and then it's just like you know now the grandma can work the dog physically without touching the dog per se or like yes. you know after having like a good source of communication and 
clarity on like you know what an out is you know and like just things like that and be able to have dog if you have dogs with like a little bit of high drive is or a bit of a working drive is important is important that you let them express that or for or this there there's times where you given the wrong placement or wrong or certain situation you don't want them to practice it but it's just like if it's safe if it's healthy for it and it's appropriate it's like go for it you know yes yes we should be absolutely giving dogs these natural outlets to bite and tug um it won't make them monsters they're still going to be great pet dogs it just gives them an outlet for something they naturally do um and actually could lead to you being better friends rather than like trying to fight it like i never want my dog to he's, he's like a I don't know, like a pity. Like I never want him to tug on something. Like okay, mm-hmm. like what? We can't do that. We can't, just let him do it. It's okay. We'll give right. him a little rag. He'll be fine. Um, of course, there's like tug, which is very like a competitive game. Um, we could do fetch uh, or like chase and catch. Go get the ball. Uh, mm-hmm. I like those a lot, but they can be very repetitive and they can create marathon runners. I think if you do um, do a lot of like fetch, uh, we, we you should start adding in obedience to it a little bit um, so that you just don't create the monster that can just ball, 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 go, 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 go. Um, it can really, we, we've seen, you know, some dogs really that can... Um, have have issues because they're so crazy and we have to end up being like oh there are other joys of life too like we can go on a walk together and you can be a dog um rather than building just a ball crazy monster still great dogs of course but. Well, of course but you know what it, that definitely sounds familiar you know with two or three of my dogs over here <laughs> like like i love yeah the ball i feel like people go to balls because it's convenient and it's like easy for them to like depending on the dog to like just go but then it gets addicting like it's just like a really just like i have this ball and everything doesn't matter which sometimes is good sometimes is bad just if just you know there's times where i don't have a ball and we're off leash somewhere all of a sudden they see this guy with a kid they're following them home and i'm like no i'm like no no you're still with me (laughs) I just left the car. I just left the ball in the car. Yes, Come back. Yes. yes you yes, know, yes. so, um, and especially too, like I, there's people that I don't know why they still do it, but there's still pe- there's people that still use like lasers to like get mm-hmm. the, get the dogs to like chase it and like play. And then I just like, I immediately just like, whoa, whoa, hold up. Right. Right. That's- there's, yeah, let's do something else. Let's do something yeah. else. Something else that doesn't like hurt people's dog's eyes and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or yeah, make no, them chase shadows or reflections. Yes, or things like yes, that. yes. Um, I've, it's kind of scary too when some dogs get those really bad shadow chasing type OCD type neurotic behaviors. Um, I, I, we've seen it in a few like, I don't think it was a border collie, but something like that. Something like the, the patterning type dog. So some dogs really end up um, just for some reason getting things in their minds like just pattern yep yep so and then uh yeah rebecca you had a sheet you had like a, something you wanted to share with us yeah yeah so um at my facility what we do is i make like a monthly calendar but essentially all the little letters stand for something so Um, every, we try to, we mix it up a lot. So some days we have long lines, some days we do agility, scent work, tricks, flirt pole, licky mat, nose work. Uh, we have bubbles, we have a ball pit, uh, massage day, um, puzzle toy, which we've talked about, of course, a pool, pool day, fitness day. And within these days also, there are different like things you can use, different pieces of equipment. I know it was a ton of them really fast, but um, I wanted to just shout those out there so everyone has those in their mind. Um, I really ended up liking the bubbles in the ball pit because when a a dog really likes bubbles or ball pits, like it's so fun to watch them just jump in a, a puddle, like a 
a thing of balls and they explode everywhere. It's really fun and they chase them. It's so it's so fun. A lot. Yeah, no, it's a, and and of course, you know, if social media, it's very acute to have that and have that, and then just you know, uh, yeah, it, I mean, between yeah, it's the, like simple things like that can like you would just add here and there, and then you mix it up with something else. It's just yeah. really nice. And people always ask me like, how long should I be doing this much? Ex how much physical exercise should I be doing every day? How much of the mental stuff should I do every day? And yeah. it's just like you know it's kind of a hard question sometimes because it's like it really depends on the dog which we end up saying that for most questions <laughs> yes. Mo yes everything basically <laughs> so um but it, it really depends like if your dog's a go-getter your dog's a very like a like a very smart this dog like rebecca's border collie you know you probably have a good amount have a good amount versus if you have like Maybe a dog that d didn't have a big of a work ethic, you know, you can yeah. do less of that. And a, and a dog trainer can teach you how to read the signs, like of when it's enough. So like before your dog's like, oh my gosh, this is so boring. We're doing this again. Or because it can get to that point too, even with the border collie who loves it, uh, he gets to a point and I see it. He's like, okay, like I'm done doing this. Like I've done it 20 times. Like you want me mm -hmm. to do it again? So I make sure I'm like, no, we're done now. Like you can go, I'll be done. You did great. Um, before he's like, again, mom, again, really? Um, so I make sure it's always like, it has to be fun. That's the point of it. They're trying, we're trying to get their minds busy and we want them to do something fun and out of the ordinary. So they're just not bored all the time from, from being in our homes. It just, it's just natural. They just get used to the things. Um, I mean, imagine being in their shoes every day. They're like, they see you go, they see you come back. Yeah, that's wonderful. And you give them great lives, but uh, these little things that some of them costed zero amount of dollars. You already have them scatter feeding, go throw, go throw your food right now for your dog. I'm sure they're going to love it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Real quick. Let's see. Tip. I don't know how to say his name is Tibber or Tiber or something like that, but he I says hi to you both. Week, but I'm not the one to speak on pronunciation because I am the worst with pronunciation. <laughs> hi to you both. Great to Thank listen you. in and hear two credible professionals talk about, important piece of the puzzle thank you both of course thank and you then we have, then we have danielle ask what's oh. your nose work organization recommendation oh this is not i don't know i'm not an expert i do do not know i'm not even tipping my toes in that one uh danielle if i let me ask some people and i'll just post it on the comments and just Perfect. let i'll let, let you know so but let me see i was there was something I was thinking about. Oh yeah, like even like agility. Like I feel like you can even just have agility equipment in your house, just practice like going through the tunnel, like do Absolutely. little hurdles like inside the house, or even just like um, I there's a there was another gal I talked use, to use, about just... use pool noodles in your house instead of uh, agility jumps if you don't want to bring them inside. Um, like you can use things that are the same or safer, um, but that are like the same thing, just different. So. The kismet, my border collie too. He's well, we live in the Miami, so he's gets very heat sensitive. Really though, like it's it's about eighty percent humidity some days and eighty five degrees, maybe ninety degrees. Um, so literally within like three to four minutes, he's done outside. That's it. So mm -hmm. um, it's just being. I forget what we were talking about. Why that was relevant, but that's uh, just like I think just being able to like, do stuff inside like a little yes. some physical stuff inside and I think just uh, yes. that 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 helps especially when you have humidity or when you have a heat wave there we go. Yep. 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 Um, like I mean like tread like if you can teach your dog to go on a treadmill that'd be that'd be yes. great or even like a slap mill which is like a a dog powered treadmill just not run on an electric yes. that for those that don't know it um, it was a, it like for me when it's raining, when it's like just pouring outside, I get to run my dogs for like 30 minutes on the slap mill and they're happy and then I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Um, think, think being innovative like that is really important yes. depending on depending on the dog. And then yes. I'm trying even, to even playing sounds too. I'm not sure if I already mentioned that one, but like go on YouTube, I don't know, animals in the wild, uh, elephants. Like how often does your dog hear an elephant? Like 
play it. Let them listen to it. Let them uh, hear those weird things going on. If there's a weird noise outside, just go stand with them and let them observe that that is enrichment and it can really help to make their day more unique and make them happier overall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even like if it's like a nice day and then instead of just going for like a normal walk, it's like you can even you can like go to like a kid's playground while everyone's at school, you know, yes. work on climbing like the little steps, maybe not the slide, but maybe just like little things that they can climb and things like that. Yes. Um, tree stumps work on like, like on the bench, you know, work on yeah. jump up there, stay even like place. Like, you know, I know trainers that like to teach like 30 minute plus place command, things like that. But it's just like, you know, just, just that mental, power just staying staying on there you know like yes. i kind of just like i could do like i've done it where i've had a walk or a ball they're all hyped yes. up and then we do place for like maybe 10 minutes to cool down and then you know yes and you if know. you're if you're a pet parent who's not like you're like oh my my dog going to the park would be a disaster you don't have to go to the park you can go to your front porch and just stand there just stand somewhere different than the inside in the backyard sure it might be a disaster the first time who cares it's fine Stand on your front porch the first day, five, 10 minutes, go inside. Next day, do the same thing. Bring some treats the next day or your enrichment item or a food puzzle, something. And I'm sure your dog trainer can help you, but it'll give your dog more, um, just a better life, a better quality life. Um, and they'll be able to hear things that before that they were like, what did they heard it probably, but they never understood what it was or that person walking by. Um, it helps them really to get the wheels turning and give them a better life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even like um, even just field trips, I would say, like going to like a sh like a like a shop or like a dog friendly area that's just like you can just get them used to like the loud sounds going on over there, shopping carts, and yes. or just like or just I, I get people that ask me, you know, hey, how do I get my dog to be comfortable at a brewery and not pulling everywhere? And I was like, you know. I just tell them, you know, just do several field trips over there. Just you and the dog Yep. gets like some finger food and just train them to teach them what you want them to do in the brewery. And then like, by the time it's like the 10th time or the fifth time you go, it's like your dog already knows what to do. So you don't, so you can enjoy prepping them for situations yes. like that. Yes, um, yes. Go to Lowe's, go to Home Depot and sit in the parking lot the first time. There's no shame in that. It's exactly what I do with the dog. <laughs> I go and I sit in the parking lot the first time and we have a good time and then we pack it up, we go home and then maybe the next time we go in, maybe not. It's okay. Mm -hmm. There's no rush. There's absolutely no rush to get anything done and we're just waiting for the dog. So, um, but all of this is a great enrichment. Um, there could also be like sensory gardens too. I know more and more people who are putting in like dog safe backyards, um, which include usually like digging in like a sand type spot. There ends up being like dog safe flowers or vegetables, things like that. Um, there could be um, different movements. So like Climbing or crawling is good for dogs or bushes. They can go around or underneath or little paths. Um, so sensory gardens in your own home is also something to try. I'm not an expert on plants, so I can't, <laughs> I, can't I can't say what plants are dogs safe, but Google knows. I'm Google knows. Plenty, I'm Siri, sure knows. Plenty. <laughs> Siri knows. Yeah, I'm, I was about to yeah, say, I'm, no, sure, I'm about to say, I'm sure there's plenty. Yeah, I was, <laughs> else I was about to say that there's, <laughs> there's pluses to everything that they are here, right? Um, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think what there was something at the tip of my tongue that I kind of forgot, but yeah, all those things is just good. And even if like you don't have to do it like every day, but if you had a oh. schedule or itinerary for like four through five or four days and then it's like you can just either have a day that for you guys to just relax at home or you know have, do some do something else at the do something else at that point uh danielle yes. uh for dog treadmill i recommend dog pacer they have really good mm -hmm. treadmills that um definitely a lot more affordable than a slot mill i'll tell you that much so yeah <laughs> Oh, she's in Florida too. Where are you at, Danielle? 
And then we also have uh, Lori said the flirt pole and tether tug are favorites of my pits and the males who I fostered. I love it. Yep. Yep. It's so good for them too. It gave them a good life. Uh, Robert said he needs to do scatter feeding for sure. Yes, your dog will love it. Mm -hmm. Oh, there. Let's see. What was it called? What dog was pace. Uh, dog dogpacer.com it's like uh, i'll leave a link for that too worst case so cool. and sh she's in i need to get one it's on my list it's really on my list right now we have the land though so like we run them like they can actually run but it gets so hot in the summer i really want an indoor one um because in the summer it's literally like two minutes and they're hot so we have to bring them inside but i know they still have obviously they still have energy um and we mm -hmm. take them to our indoor playroom and play but i wish that we had a um treadmill it's coming in the future they'll get right. one eventually they'll get one they have all the other toys right now oh yeah i mean also and then who knows you know you might get a pool or a water treadmill right. or something that you can <laughs> yes. get, them get them tired with that and then yeah. still be nice and cool in there so Yes, I might just get the dock diving pool I've been wanting for a very long time. <laughs> you know, just just get something that was due like years ago, and uh, <laughs> and I can take a dip in it myself. <laughs> exactly, it's good for both the dogs and the human. Good. I think we gave them a great list of a million different things to try for dog enrichment. Yeah. No, I definitely agree. It was. Uh, Hope everything makes sense for you guys. And then, yeah. like I said, if you miss the replay, don't worry. It's it it's gonna be on Facebook forever. And then plus, I put it on YouTube. So if yes. you want to share with people, with friends or family, I you can just copy paste it. Go to my YouTube channel. There's the past interviews like JJ and Allison. There's also like several series of interviews that I did like years ago. So um, yeah. and. It just gets better, you know. Like I have Pat Stewart. I have Pat Stewart that I'm gonna schedule in April. I'm gonna talk to Tyler Mudo in March. I'm gonna talk to um, Julie Hart in March about fearful dogs. Yeah. I'm trying to think who. I think, me. I think Hannah Lo. I also want to talk about. I think he's like dog trainer burnout in uh, in April as well. So, you have a great lineup. Oh yeah, I was I was stoked I was stoked for this one. So yeah, yeah, no, it's so good. Keep keep it up, keep it up. You're giving great knowledge to to pet parents, uh, dog trainers. Keep it up. We need more of this. Of course, you know. Oh, here we got one more. Let's see. My dog glows when I break out the long line on walk, sniffing peas everywhere. Yes. She's so happy. Yes, we love it. It should be the goal: the happy, happy dogs, happy, healthy dogs, doing dog things. Dog yep. things are, are good and they're normal. And it's fine. It's also, you know, it's like happy wife, happy life. It's like happy dogs, happy life as well. So <laughs> yes, yes, yes. as long as they don't pee on my things, I'm good. <laughs> as long as they don't chew on shit or like, you know, they don't ruin my my life. Guess, it's all good. I guess good. we do have lots of rules then. But... <laughs> all right. That, yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. Yeah, guys, I think uh, Rebecca and I are going to sign out. I think that was mm -hmm. plenty of things to talk about. Oh, hello. Hold on. Why are you? Why are you being so needy? Oh, huh? we'll have the dogs meet real quick. All right. There is he is. Your, is that going to be our friend when we see your them friend. in conference? Yeah, we'll see you in Minnesota. In yeah. Where? September, October? I don't know what we should. I'm pretty. Sure, I'm. I'm. I'm pretty sure it's September. September. Yes. Am I? Am I still babysitting him? Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure, Kev. Please, please. He needs. He needs watching one night. Oh, we we won't have a problem with that, won't we? Hmm? <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, hold on, this other dog, Charlie, Charlie, get, Charlie, get off! I didn't, I didn't ask you to come out, you silly thing. How cute! All right, guys, so we're All gonna right. sign off. We're gonna say our byes, and then hope everyone has a good rest of your day, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. All right, guys. Bye, guys. Peace.